Hi everyone, and welcome to my Bluetooth in Action series. My name is James Language, and together we'll be looking at the Silicon Labs Blue Gecko Wireless Starter Kit. This series will show you how to create Bluetooth smart applications on the BGM111 module, but first things first. In this episode, we'll just be looking at the hardware. We won't be doing any development today, but don't worry, we'll get into development soon. Let's take a closer look at the Blue Gecko module wireless starter kit. The motherboard looks very much like a Silicon Labs starter kit. To demonstrate this, I've shown the wireless starter kit next to a Zero Gecko starter kit. The wireless starter kit is slightly larger and shares the same connection on the right hand side and also uses the same memory LCD screen. All Silicon Labs starter kits have a J-Link interface to power the device, communicate via serial, flash and debugger programs. On the top right hand side, you can see the SI7021 temperature and humidity module connected via I2C. The wireless starter kit has an Ethernet connector, a nice addition for development, but also to use the device as a network coprocessor, something we'll get into later when talking about programming the BGM111. On the Zero Gecko starter kit, you can see the EFM microcontroller. However, the Blue Gecko module wireless starter kit doesn't have a microcontroller on the board. Instead, it has a connector for the Bluetooth module, hence the name of the starter kit. It's important to note this. This kit isn't about a microcontroller that talks to a Bluetooth device. This is a microcontroller with embedded Bluetooth, and that changes a lot. The connector is fairly large because the module has a lot of I.O. On the top and bottom of the main board, you can see these different I.O. ports. They use standard 2.54mm connectors, so it is easy to solder on headers, something that I'll probably do later on in the series. The kit also adds a small expansion board, which adds a small joystick, two push buttons, and an accelerometer. It fits nicely onto the I.O. port on the right. This connector is identical on all Silicon Labs evaluation boards, and so you can use other expansion boards. For example, the board I have here, the Silicon Labs Biometric Sensor Board. We'll have some fun with this board later on. For now, let's have a look at the module itself. Here is the Blue Gecko BGM111 module. This is where the magic happens. It is a Class 1, single-mode Bluetooth smart device. The module is fairly large, due to the two connectors underneath, but most of the board is dedicated to routing connectors, the real BGM111 module can be seen on the top, and it is tiny. The metallic part hides the microcontroller, and the small component on the top is the antenna. Altogether, the module is only 13 by 15 millimeters, and everything is integrated. Inside that metallic shield is an EFR32 chip. The BGM111 module uses a specific EFR32 chip, but Silicon Labs has a large range of EFR32 chips to suit your needs. The microcontroller on the BGM111 module is an ARM Cortex-M4 with FPU, running at 40 MHz, with 256 KB of flash and 32 KB of RAM. Transmit power can be tweaked to reach up to 200 meters line of sight range, or lowered for energy efficient low range communications. Current units shipped are Bluetooth 4.1 compliant, but Bluetooth 4.2 will soon be available as a simple software update. The module fits snugly onto the mainboard, and won't fall off when using the kit. You can safely use the kit in a car, or anywhere else where vibration is a factor, you won't have any problems. When first using this kit, you might have a few questions, or even worse, you might be worried about a few things. Since this kit is a single mode Bluetooth smart device, how do you connect using a standard Bluetooth device? To show off the module's capabilities, and to answer any questions you might have, Silicon Labs has preloaded a simple application that shows off what the board can do. It requires very little. The kit itself comes with everything needed to get you up and running, and the only thing that is missing is probably in your pocket already, a mobile telephone. Most modern smartphones have Bluetooth 4.0 or higher. For Apple products, the iPhone 4S onwards, third generation iPads and newer, iPad minis and iPad Air all have Bluetooth 4.0. For Android devices, Bluetooth Smart was adopted in Android 4.3. Check your mobile telephone to see what version of Bluetooth is available. Silicon Labs has developed an app to help you evaluate the board, available on both Google Play and the App Store. I'll put a link to the Silicon Labs webpage in the comments of this video. I'll be using Android for this presentation, but the iPhone app works the same way. Plug in your starter kit to your computer and make sure the selector is in the USB position. Your computer might go through a hardware detection phase, but the starter kit should be usable immediately. Start the app on your telephone. If Bluetooth is not enabled on your telephone, the app will warn you, and an option will be displayed to enable Bluetooth. Tap on the Health Thermometer tab, and wait a few seconds. A list of devices will be displayed. 
Tap on the blue gecko BG line, and after a few more seconds, you should be connected. The Bluetooth starter kit broadcasts its identity to everyone, and does not require authentication for devices to connect, so your telephone will simply connect. The current temperature will be displayed, by default in Fahrenheit, but you can change that to Celsius on the bottom left hand side. The temperature is taken from the SI7021 sensor, once per second, and broadcast to devices that have connected. If you're in a cool environment, put your finger on the sensor, and you should see the temperature change rapidly. So, my first impressions. Well, I was called in for a project where the client wanted to add Bluetooth to an existing device once. It ran on a quad-core microprocessor, Cortex-A7 if I remember correctly, and the device itself needed that much processing power. But even tweaking interrupts, there sometimes wasn't quite enough processing power to use an adapter easily. We would get drop messages, or we just couldn't get the reset and reflash timings right. In the end, we managed to get everything up and running. We could have shaved weeks of research and development by having intelligence directly inside the Bluetooth adapter, and it would have added security and functionality. Actually, think about it, no, we probably wouldn't have saved weeks of development. We would have spent that time to add new features and make the product even better. What's interesting about this device is the choice of the microcontroller. I can imagine most adapters using a small Cortex M0 Plus or something like that. And while the Bluetooth protocol itself needs some calculation power, Cortex M0 Plus will probably be enough, since messages were simply sent through UART. This device uses a Cortex M4 with an FPU, previously known as the Cortex M4F. It's one of the most powerful microcontroller architectures on the market, but still energy efficient. And Silicon Labs has been making ultra-low powered devices for years, and they have a lot of know-how. The most interesting fact is that the device is programmable. Not just the GPOs, but you have access to everything on the microcontroller. Timers, ADCs and DACs, PWM, and of course GPOs, with interrupts. You can have an entire system on a tiny chip, and you don't need to be afraid of not being able to use peripherals. How about a device small enough and light enough to be put on a pet's collar, and energy efficient enough to not need a battery change for months? And of course, with enough I.O. to add as many sensors as you need. Well, that's it for my introduction video. I hope you enjoyed it. In the next episode, we'll look into how to program the BGM111 module, and you'll see that there are a few choices available to you. Thanks for following. Don't forget to drop a like if you liked the episode, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye-bye.